I record all of my lessons and put them on the Google report. <laughs> yeah, it just started. I we are rocking and rolling. So, couple things. Uh, here's the tough thing. You are going to sit through all these classes today, and they're going to give you more information than you have ever wanted to know in your life. Correct? And you're like, how am I going to remember all this? You're not. That makes it normal. It's normal. And for whatever reason, we as teachers have feel, look, I'm going to cram everything down your throat. We're going to open up the fire hydrant and expect you to drink, and you're not going to be able to gain that much other than a little bit of knowledge. So I do record all my lessons. This will normally be the class that I will record in. I have two other sections of CP Algebra 1. Um, and I post the lessons on Schoology. And all of your notes will be on Schoology as well. So anything that I put up on this board, actually from all of my periods, um, we will uh, will be saved. So if you, want, if you need to print those out, awesome. If you're the student that, um, and this might, this might be you because it was me. Have you ever like started noticing that there's a fly flying around the room? And you're like, look at my villainous head. Now is that Jennifer's head? Oh shoot, he's up there teaching. I missed like 10 minutes of it. That was me. I was that kid, I'm sorry. I don't mean that to be that way. But you know, it makes you normal if things distract you. So I record for a number of reasons. One, if you're distracted and you miss something, please go back to it. And say, look, you don't have to watch the whole video. You can fast forward. It's just a YouTube video. So once it's buffered in, you can skip to whatever region you need. Or if you're at home and you're like, oh, my tummy hurts, and I'm, I think I'm going to just watch Price is Right all day, um, well, take a break and watch my video because it'll be uploaded by probably about 11 o'clock each day, maybe between 11 and noon, if we have a lecture. So if we have a test or quiz, I'm not going to record because that's you know, not going to help us. Um, so let me, I'm going to do this a couple different ways. Let's do this. Can you just kind of snake those around, just pass them around, all that can happen. There's all kinds of information that I'm going to give you, and all of a sudden it's going to be like, boom. But I want to show you a few things, and it covers that sheet as well. But um, the hard thing is there, there's a textbook that you will have to purchase, and, and if financial is a problem, if money's a problem, you need to let your counselor know, and your counselor will give you a voucher to go get it. But I think it's 5 or $6, and it, it'll buy you the, the math book, and you buy one for each semester. And you buy first semester's first. Second semester's not out yet. Um, but you will just need to take a look at that book itself, and that's what we will do all of our uh, notes and stuff out of. Now, here is the really, really tough thing about this. So somebody, I don't know, it wasn't my decision. It might have been my decision. I, it, it didn't even blame me. But here's the problem. The cover to the book is red, and it says CP Algebra 1, and it says this on your paper as well. Now, CP, CP Algebra 1 and Accelerated CP Algebra 1 have the exact same color cover. So, if you buy the book, make sure you look down on it. It says CP Algebra 1. Yeah? It's a little bit different. Yeah, I don't know. How, yeah, I guess so. If it's still on that plastic wrap, I think you'd be able to. Oh, it's the hardcover book? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, we will assign those to you guys later. Um, should I keep that? Well, what I would do is it's probably on your um, thing as a fine. Oh, yeah, so, I would do it as a fine. Oh, okay. I, I would, if I were you, I would go turn that in to the math science resource room, and we'll recheck out another one. That way we can take it off, and then we'll put it back up. I know it sounds silly, but I would hate for you to have a silly fine, and then all of a sudden, oh, you can't. Holy cow. So, yes, there is a textbook that we will assign to you to take home. We will use it this much in class. So why give it to you? Because the district said, hey, we want all schools to give this to kids in Algebra 1. Great. So you can take it home 
and you can bring it back last day of school. Yeah. Sure. Oh, did you guys know? Oh my. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you get? Oh. You're skipping rows. Get in there, and you got one. Everyone else have one of these? Okay, cool. Um, so I. My classes aren't that hard to figure out for most kids. Um, will you have homework each night? Yes. Will I saturate you with hours upon hours? If it's hours upon hours of homework out of this class, you might be in the wrong class. And I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm just saying there's, there's always been some sort of time when a student is like, oh, shoot, I'm in the wrong class. And it happens. And it's okay. He did nothing wrong. You know, we can modify and move it. So um, if your homework is taking you hours upon hours to do, please realize that it, it shouldn't. Um, and how I go about homework is I just walk around the room. I put one of three marks on your homework. Pretty simple. So if this is your page, let's say there's three hole punches. You still with me in this diagram? I know it doesn't look perfect, but let's make sure. So what I'll do is I will have one of my markers, and I'll just come by, and you have your name on it. And then I will come by and say, oh, OK. Did you do? How did you do? So this is you. It looks like you worked out three quarters to all of it. This is half to three quarters. And this is less than half. Or nothing. OK? And it's pretty simple to go through. So what, what I'm going to do is once I collect your homework, I'm, you know, I'll go over problems. You have problems you need to, you know, like, oh my gosh, I, how did you do three over five over seven? I don't know how that happened. Ask about it. So what you'll do is you'll write up on either of these boards, you know, like number six, and here was the problem. Then we can work it out, um, and then we'll do that for so, and we'll make we'll make it work for you, so it happens in a good way. Um, what these marks basically mean is this: I'm going to, and let me just make sure I say this right. If you have this, you're going to gain four points. If you have this, you're going to gain three points. And if you have this, you're going to gain two points. Okay. Now, if you're here and you've done nothing more, this two actually turns to a one. If you're here and you didn't do anything, I'll probably make this a 2.5. And if you had three points of it done, and we went over a bunch of problems and you chose not to make any corrections, this could go down to a 3.5. Okay, so my homework policy is pretty easy. I mean, honestly, it's like you get it on your desk, while I'm walking around, if you have questions on specific problems, you just go up to the, the board and you put, say, number seven, and the problem was, you know, 1x over 8 equals 54, or something like that. Um, and you just write it down, and then we'll, we'll go over them as a class. Just because you have a question doesn't mean nobody else has a question. So that, it's just important for you to, to kind of know that. Um, that's the long and the short of it. It's not tough. So... Any questions so far? All right. So I know this isn't geometry, but I'm going to give you a small geometry lesson. You guys ready? Okay. All right, here. What is this shape? Rectangle. It's a rectangle. Is that okay? Everyone familiar with a rectangle? Okay. And, you know, you might be familiar saying, oh, a rectangle has four 90-degree angles. It has two opposite sets of opposite sides that are equal and parallel. And it, there's all kinds of things that you can do, and you'll learn about that in geometry. So I don't want to spoil any surprises. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to say that this is your grade. Still with me in this story? The area of your grade is not going to change. In order to find the area of a rectangle, you will length times width. Sorry, I spoiled geometry for you as well. But I am not going to change the size of this rectangle at all. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to break this rectangle into some regions. Let me just make sure I have Okay. Now let's just pretend I'm a really good, talented person and can do this well. This can be 15%. This is going to be 20%. 
and this is going to be 65%. So looking at your paper, what category is worth 20%? Homework. Homework. What category is worth 65%? Test and quizzes. Test and quizzes. And then what area is worth 15%? Now, I had said something earlier about this rectangle. What did I say? What was the one thing? Oh, shoot. <coughs> What's that? What, did, what never changes? The area. So it never, the area doesn't get any bigger. So this is what's going to happen. Do you think there's going to be more grades that go in for a final exam than there goes in for a homework? There'll probably be a lot more homework assignments. Would you agree? So this is what's going to happen. Now, I want you to t keep an eye up there. And each red dot I put is homework assignments. Did that area change at all? No. Okay. Each blue dot is going to be tests and quizzes. Fewer dots, but did the area change at all? No. And then the final exam, we will do in a purplish color. There's usually three parts to your final. We do it over a couple of days. There's one that you'll do on Schoology. There's one that you'll do, you know, it's short answer, and then the last one will be done on some sort of scantron. Did anyone see any of the areas of any of those regions change size? No. Okay, so if you do your homework, do your homework, do your homework, do your homework, that's going to be worth 20% of your entire semester grade. So if you don't do your homework, the highest grade technically you could get in here would be an 80%. That would be if you had 100% on all tests and quizzes, 100% on the final exam. Okay, if you just did homework and you decided to skip all lectures or all, all uh, tests and quizzes and the final, the highest grade you would earn in the class is at 20%, and that's an F. That's not good. Um, if you're the person who says, I'm not doing homework ever, but I, I will do tests and quizzes, I'm going to skip the final, you can still get a D in the class. It's kind of crazy, but that's kind of how it goes. That's if you ace it. So what, I, what my point is, is when you start looking at the grade book, you're going to start seeing points that go in for assignments. Okay. But when those points go in for an assignment, a homework isn't going to wiggle your grade too much against a test or a quiz. Why would I say something like that? Would a test or a quiz be worth a little bit more oomph? And that's where we're at. So uh, that's kind of the, so you think about, and not, anytime you, you're looking at your grade and you have a question, please talk to me. Don't grandstand in front of the class. Just talk to me, and we can figure it out, okay? Um... Again, all of my notes will be posted on Schoology, so if you want to print those off, please do. Okay? And again, my lecture. So when you go on to Schoology, it's going to, and I'll go there in a, in a moment, but you'll be able to see um, what I'm talking about with that. So any questions so far? All right. Um, so I'm not that good of a teacher in this category. I so I don't carry a cell phone. I don't carry a wallet either. So I, I'm messed up in the head. Um, but anyhow, the reason I don't carry a cell phone is I'm here for your education. Okay? If my wife or my kids need to get a hold of me, then they'll either leave a message in my office or they'll call my cell phone, which is, I think it's in my bag, it might be in my car. That's how disconnected I am from the world. And I'm not trying to be disconnected because I'm a bad person. I'm just saying I'm disconnected because when I'm here, I want to focus on teaching kids. Okay? So, that my expectation with you with cell phones is the same. Okay? If you feel you need your cell phone out to see what the rest of the world's doing, you need to go to see the dean. And I'm gonna I'll ask for your phone and your ID. You need to pick it up from the dean. Okay? And 
that's why I think I'm a cruddy teacher because I don't know how to teach when a student's going, oh, look at Instagram or whatever app is the most current cool app. I don't know how to teach that student. And I'm sorry. I wish I learned better when I was young, but I a lot of how I teach is stand and deliver and answering questions and realizing kids are kids and kids are going to make mistakes and I'm an adult and you guys think you guys make mistakes. Oh my gosh. You know what my biggest mistake is? It's my biggest downfall in life. You guys want to know what it is? It's horrible. I have a really bad sense of humor. I laugh when people fall. That's me. Not like fall or fail. I mean, like, if, if you walk in and you see someone trip and they fall, I'm sorry, it's fun. What if they get hurt? It's just downright hilarious then. I'm sorry, that's me. And so I, I'm not doing it to be offensive. It's just, like, that's how I'm built. And I don't know what's wrong with me. Maybe my mom dropped me and laughed or something. I don't know. So there's just things that take place. Um, let me ask you all this. Do you recognize this type of page? Yes. Schoology, right? And if you don't know about it, we'll make you familiar. But what's going to happen is I have a small little hello video here. It's just a test. You don't have to watch it. Uh, and then we have the syllabus, which is the same thing that you have in your hands. Um, oh, here's a good thing. So a photo of what your first semester book looks like. Okay? So notice it's red. Says number 536 on the top. Says CP Algebra 1, semester 1. Yours probably won't say stir up right here unless you write it. But that's what your book might look like. So that's kind of important. So I have that there. You know, if you're in the store and you have that phone that gets that capability. Um, I also put on there a picture. And this is so cool. You know, this is old school. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, there you go. Um, according to our bell schedule. So if you ever need that, it's there on Schoology under my page. Um, and then I will tag up my PowerPoint about my teaching. Um, so our, most of our day will take place basically, you go over, I will go over homework, you know, check it off, go over it, 10, 15 minutes, usually a lecture of some sort, going over new material, and there might be the opportunity for you to start on that day's assignment. That's, it, there's not much more to it. And I got to tell you, I, this is 22 years of teaching for me. I used to teach at schools that had block scheduling. I got to tell you, I really love this traditional schedule that we have here. It's a good thing for kids, in my opinion. I see a lot of really great things. All right, let's have some fun. So I'm going to close that, and I'm going to open this. And I'm going to go up. Oh, there you go. All right, so I came across this. I thought this was kind of silly. What if algebra teachers are really pirates hard? And, and we're using us as minions, using you guys to find X. Okay, if you don't know anything about pirates, X marks the spot. Okay. All right, let's talk about me. Uh, this is me, it's year 22 of teaching. I teach three math classes, all CP Algebra 1, which is pretty awesome. And I teach medical careers class, which happens before school. Um, and I also work with executive internships for the district, so students that are seniors in high school uh, can get internships. And I, I'm in charge of the engineering and the medical internships, so we have some pretty neat things for kids. So that might be something later in, in school that you might want to talk about. Um, so, and this is all, this again will be presented, it's also recorded. Um, my email is that, 720-554-2465 is my office phone number. Um, my office is just straight down this hallway. Uh, find 430, West 439A, or let's say 439A. It's pretty simple. Um, let's mix this up a little bit. So me, I grew up in Tempe, Arizona. I was actually born in New Jersey in 1973, moved to Arizona. I went to Fuller Elementary School, Phillips Middle School, and Mark Luce Denise, the high school, home of the Padres. Um, when I was 10 years old, my dad bought a hot air balloon, so that was kind of cool. So from 10, from my, my age of being 10 to 21, he had a hot air balloon. We could go out hot air balloon. My best friend in the whole world, his name is Matt Owens. Uh, we met in 1974. We still are best friends up to this day. Uh, my wife is Susan. She grew up in Omaha. She went to West Side High School. She actually went to school with the band 311. So that's kind of cool. I have two daughters. Uh, my oldest daughter, her name's Leah. She's in 10th grade at Arapahoe High School. And my younger daughter is May. She's in 8th grade at Powell Middle School. Um, so if you ever hear me talk about my daughters, I'm sorry. I, I don't, kids. 
the break. All right, so it's kind of boring, I know, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see, from age 10 to 15, my dad used me as chief labor to work at his business called Stir Up Draperies. And then from, eight, from age 16 to 24, I sold car washes, lube and oils, and detail work at a pretty busy car wash called Carousel Car Wash in Mesa, Arizona. And I uh, made pretty good money doing it. I actually paid for a lot of my school doing it. Um, and then 23 to 25, I picked up a second job. I went to school part-time um, because I had to pay for my college. So I was choosing to pay for my college as it went along. It took, it took, it took me a little longer. Uh, but I worked making pizza, waiting tables, and I attended a bar at a place called Nello's Pizza down in Arizona, which has got good Chicago-style pizza for Arizona. Uh, and then from age 25 to now 46, uh, I, I taught high school math. I'll be 47 in December, December 30th, so I expect cupcakes for that. Uh, that's a little bit about me. Let's see what else we got. Yeah, I'm still boring. Yeah, sorry. Oh, music. Oh, I love music. Music is my life. Yeah. Okay, so when you were 67, uh, you moved to a place in Fairbanks, Phoenix, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Phoenix, and then Tempe is a suburb. Mesa kind of has a couple of people after that, and then Chandler, and then Boulder, as you head to the south and east of Phoenix. Yeah. So I had a friend who was directly involved in the Phoenix Phoenix. Yeah, baby. That's awesome. So, my music, oh, I love music. I love music with a passion, I really do. Um, music, of all the mediums that are out there in life, music is one of those that takes me back to times and, and reminds me, and I just love it. So, the song that defined me as a teacher, um, and this doesn't mean because my, I run my classroom this way, I like to do things my way. Like if you have a teacher going, it's best if you do this. No, my way is better. Um, that's how I roll. But Frank Sinatra sang My Way. I absolutely love the song. Great song. Uh, my favorite song of, that defines me throughout life is uh, Rhinestone Cowboy by Glenn Campbell. And unfortunately, Glenn Campbell passed away Tuesday this past week. Uh, sad day for me. He was a, he just, Rhinestone Cowboy, if you don't know the song, it, it just <coughs> really, bless you, helps me out. My favorite rock and roll song is Love It Loud by the band Kiss. Kiss is my favorite band ever. Ever, yeah. Uh, can I move over there? Yeah. Um, right is it? Yeah, absolutely. And then let's see. Uh, the song that reminds me of when I was in high school is uh, "Never Say Goodbye" by Bon Jovi. And then uh, the song that I really love, um, because if you have your earbuds in and you play this song, it's called "Streetwalkers" by Michael Jackson. If you know the song, if you, if you don't, you know, upload it. Here's the fun thing about the song. Hey, how you doing? Good. Have a seat, and we'll take care of you. The song from Michael Jackson, Streetwalker, if you put your earbuds in, how the beat of the song works, it doesn't matter if a person is running, skipping, walking, limping, riding their bikes, their legs are going to the beat of the song. It's pretty cool. So I, I think it's a fantastic song for, for just how music works. Um, I used to teach in Las Vegas. My first teaching assignment was teaching in Vegas. And I taught at a place called Las Vegas Academy, which was a performing arts magnet school for all of Las Vegas, which Las Vegas was Clark County. And at the time, it was 55 different high schools. And so kids that wanted to um, get into performing arts would go there. And so I taught some kids that are pretty famous. Uh, let me show you a few of them. Uh, let's see. Uh, Schaefer Smith. Great kid. You all know him as Neo. Okay? Uh, Baron Vaughn, comedian. Unbelievable. The Girls of 702. Camelia Williams, right here in the middle. The loudest kid I have ever taught in my life. But she was wonderful. Multi million dollar record deal signed when they were seniors in high school. Pretty cool. Uh, the Goobs. Matthew Craig Goobler. He is the voice of Alvin on Alvin and the Chipmunks on those movies. He also plays. Um, a FBI uh, guy in uh, Criminal Minds, so he made it. Ken Walcott came in second place in the very first season of American Idol. He's also a uh, singing artist. So that's just a few of the kids that I taught in life. Um, other kids that I've known in life that I either went to the school or I grew up with um, are right here. So Mike Spadoni, I taught him at Las Vegas Academy. He is in a band called Weird Science, and a couple years ago, they were the opening act for Cheryl Crow, so went to a nationwide tour. Uh, Jason Newstead actually went to the high school I went to in Arizona. He was a senior when I was a freshman. 
So Jason and I, man, we're buds. He knows me well. Yeah, right. No, but he, uh, he was the second bass guitar player for the band Metallica. And so that was pretty cool. Uh, J.J. Rogers, she and I went to the same church together. We grew up. I mean, I've known J.J. since we were, gosh, I was probably like six or seven years old. And uh, she does a lot of Broadway acting as well as musicals. And she does a few every now and then on TV. So a few things. And then John Cornell plays bass for a band called Hugo. Um, so John's right here. And Hugo's a yeah, kind of a fun band. I don't know. It's probably not your genre of music, but he also went to uh, Las Vegas Academy and uh, did a great job. And a few other people from my past, let's see, the band The Refreshments and The Gin Blossoms, they both came out of Tempe, Arizona. I grew up listening to them when they were just the local scene. They would play at you know high schools uh, when we were all in high school. The Gin Blossoms, actually, they all went to the same high school as I. So we had a great time. And Ratuna, Ratunia Wesley also went to Las Vegas Academy. She's on a show called uh, True Blood. So just kind of some fun things. But, you know, there's not just them. There's numbers of kids. I think this is one of the funniest. I don't know if you can see this picture. This is uh, Tracy Blackwell and his wife, Elena. They actually met in my geometry class when they were sophomores in high school. And uh, and they they had a whole bunch of kids. And I don't know if you can see this one. He's actually holding the youngest upside down. So that was kind of their holiday postcard that went out, but there was all kinds of great kids. I, I coached soccer at Israel and Vicente, and oh, that was back in when I was teaching in Reno, and some kids from Chaparral during one of the homecoming weeks, and let's see, Shane Callahan, he he just graduated from Stanford. Um, or, you know, Shane Callahan went to see you, and this is, uh, oh shoot, I just lost his name. Brandon, oh, I just lost his last name. I feel dumb, I'm sorry. Let's see. Um, there's just a few kids. This is uh, this is Johnny. Can't really see him that well, but yeah, I'll have this on the, the website so you can take a look at it. He is this crazy artist. He does all these huge ironwork things. You just look at it and go, what is this? And also you're like, oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, he still lives in Vegas. So a lot of kids I taught him in my past. A few more kids. Um, great kids. Hey, here's a couple of Creek kids. You know, Johnny Watson and Hayden Parr. Love those kids. I graduated a couple of years ago. Uh, let's see. Oh man, gosh, this is Danny Ryan. What are you guys characters? Get out of here. But and you always be a kid to me. Doesn't matter what your age is. You're always gonna be a kid. So I apologize if I ever offend you. Um, as I said, I love music and I love the network. When I was at Chaparral, uh, me and some of the students we decided let's do full face makeup and we performed at one of the assemblies and we did two songs by Kiss. We did Love It Loud and Rock and Roll All Night, Rock and Roll All Night, Roll All Night, Roll. Um, it was really loud. It was fun. We had a great time doing it. And then uh, the next year, uh, that's me, and then we had some other kids. Um, we did uh, two songs. We did, uh, let's see, it was uh, um, Beastie Boys, Fight for Your Right to Party, and uh, Motley Crue, Home Sweet Home. And I did the front and back end of Motley Crue, Home Sweet Home on the piano. And uh, also, I sang all of those. I saw a question. No? So that's just a little bit about me. And then let's see what else. Um, let's just skip the slide. Um, in 2016, I got to convince some of the teachers here. Let's uh, get a band together. And we sang Soul Man. We called ourselves the Bruins Brothers rather than the Blues Brothers. And uh, this was during our Make-A-Wish week. So uh, we have a few of our math teachers. He was an assistant principal here. He's now at Eagle Crest now. Uh, you guys know, probably know Mr. Libby, Mr. Mimack. And uh, so that was a lot of fun doing that. And again, when it goes loud, we go home. Uh, this past year, we actually called ourselves the Greenwood Village people. So I suckered a few more teachers to perform YMCA. We played live music. And it was really a lot of fun doing this because when we were in the auditorium, we had about 900 people in there doing YMCA while we are singing. It was loud. It was awesome. So I just, I love that kind of stuff. Who knows what we'll do this year, but I'm sure we'll do something. I mean, that's just, those are things that I love. Um, so this was me when I performed Kiss. Um, this was a picture I took of the band Kiss. I had second row center stage and uh, meet and greet backstage to see Kiss. Here's me chatting with Gene Simmons at that concert. And the cost of the ticket was $1,250, and I paid nothing for it. One of my students, her father grew up with Gene Simmons, got free tickets for me and him. So we had, you know, center stage, 
meet and greet backstage. It was awesome. I got to hang out with Kiss, man. I was like, dude, that's awesome. amazing. And so there's me at the when we were backstage with the uh, meet and greet. And so I, I'm the guy without the makeup on. Um, so just kind of fun. Let's see. Uh, my wife and kids. So that's me. That's my daughter May, my daughter Leah, and my wife Susan. Uh, my wife teaches at Arapahoe Community College and also CU Denver. She teaches chemistry. And uh, the best thing is, guys and girls, no matter what you choose to do in life, follow your dreams. Enjoy what you do every day, and don't let tell someone. Don't worry what others think about what you're doing. If you're if you're doing it and you're not harming somebody and you enjoy what you're doing, do it. And that's that's kind of my motto of going through life. Um, classroom rules. Obviously, we're going to follow all Cherry Creek High School and Cherry Creek School District rules. Homework, you know, we're checking each day, tests and quizzes. Um, I do have a page on Facebook, but I don't use it that often. It was called Mr. Service Classroom. It's on Facebook. That's where I used to post my videos. Uh, unfortunately, the district blocked that kind of stuff because, you know, it's bad or something. Um, my office hours are basically first and fourth periods and before school. My other job has me working over this building over here. So at the end of the day, I'm not on campus. So if you need help before school and first and fourth periods, I don't know if you have those off as well. But we'll figure those out. Um, this is what my YouTube page looks like. So if you wanted to find that, you know, you can go there. Or the best way for you really to find everything is you log on to Schoology. You go to your courses or CPL for one. And then my page will be right below. And you can find my notes and my videos so you can print those out at any time. Um, what questions do you have for me? Did I go first now? Yeah. Do you have enough time to address Let's take care of that tomorrow. Sound good? Yeah. I have a question. So when you check homework, uh -huh. uh, are you, so is it every uh, day that you're going to get back? I, I will collect it that day and the next day I'll get back up. So coming out to you, I would like you all, so we do have a math packet that will be due. Let's have, let's have you all bring that tomorrow, the math packet. If you didn't get one, come talk to me and we'll, we'll show you where to get it. Maybe I'll link it to Schoology so you guys can, guys and girls can get it that way. And if you need a lot of extra time, yo. Uh, I'm grading it based on how well you did on it. So I'm going through pretty quickly on it. And then this will be your first homework assignment that, you know, get us far done. I know it says no calculators, but guys and girls, i got to tell you, there will never be a time in my class that I won't let you use a calculator. I won't let you use your cell phone calculator. But if you had a TI-84 or a TI-83, you can rent them from our resource room. I think it's 20 or 25 or $30 a year. You can rent it if you'd like, or you can go buy one, or you can go swipe it from your brother or sister. Or if you're not really into the big calculator, get that one that's sitting in that drawer at home and figure that out. So what do y'all think? Did I do okay? Yes. Great. Sweet. I got to stop recording because we are good. And we're out of 10.06. And then one last thing, one last thing, and just do me this favor. I'm never going to line up by the door before the bell rings, and I don't want you to either. Okay, just, you know, it's fine you have stuff packed up, you want to go to the other side of the room and chat with your buddy. I just don't want you lined up by the door because it kind of looks kind of bad. And there are some teachers that do indeed allow kids to go early. I'm not that guy. And I'm going to mark you present or absent.